Okay, so I'm starting a new series. This is ill-advised. Blaster Master, everybody. I just want to point out, notice the box art says Authentic Arcade Edition. Uh, yes. This game was not in the arcades. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't. Why did you put Authentic Arcade Edition it's not an addition of anything. It's just the game. <laughs> also, see that 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 cool looking thing on the box art there. Yeah. Uh huh. That's that's the first form of the level eight boss. Oh my gosh. I, you gotta love old school NES boxes where it's just uh to put a sprite and to, some weird fucking graphic in the background and call it a day. <laughs> oh, and there's a there's a target. Yeah, put a target. Yeah, I, there we go. Anyways, let us let us begin the epic story of a boy and his frog and the tank that he found underground. Right. Oh gosh, my eyes. Blaster Master. Start reading the story. This game is about a guy named Jason. Jason had a pet frog named Fred. One day. Fred decided he had enough of being locked up in a fishbowl and made a dash for the door. As fate would have it, Jason was there when all this happened, and he gave chase. Once outside, Jason was totally amazed to find Fred running towards a huge radioactive chest. Okay. As soon as Fred touched it, he grew to an enormous size, and the radioactive chest fell into the earth along with Fred. Jason tried to reach for Fred but fell into the hole along with him. When Fred landed, he found himself along next to a huge armored vehicle. This was not just any vehicle, but one designed for the ultimate challenge against the radioactive mutants living under the Earth's crust. These mutants created from escape radioactive... Escape radioactive waste are controlled by the Plutonium Boss! I think Plutonium Boss is my favorite part. <laughs> Uh. Doc, you just don't... <laughs> well, continue. There's more. <laughs> your mission is to fight your way and destroy the plutonium boss before he destroys you. Along the way to your final encounter are many warlords of the underground you must destroy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, the store In Japan, this game is called, like, History of the War Records or Interplanetary War Records or something along those lines. Metafight. And Metafight in the title screen is written in English. So, is it. It's just. I'm just gonna call it Metafight from now on. And that game was about the planet Sophia being invaded by the Invem. Uh. The, the, the Invem aliens from the Dark Star Cluster. <laughs> and you were Kane Gardner, blue haired pilot of the Metal Attacker, designed by Jennifer, I don't know her full name. Huh. Hey, Mark? Hmm? Take a wild guess. What button do I press to enter this door? Uh. A. No. Up. No. Down. Yes. <laughs> it is down. <laughs> down. Down with the establishment. Jason is a bit on the chunky side. Look at it, this chunky chonker. <laughs> By the way, if you hold the if you hold the grenade button, you can strafe. I got a gun power up! Now I can shoot the full length of the screen! Your controller fell. Oh, here it is. I'm not Google. There it is. There it is. Perfect. Perfect! I know I can always trust Adobe when they give me free shit. When they give me free shit. I got a gun power up. However, these grenades 
these grenades and this gun power up do not transfer to out here. Also, out here, Jason can take fall damage and die. Huh. Because you don't want to go too far without your tank. It's literally the only way forward. So rather than design the levels so that you can always get back to the tank, they just said, you die if you uh, fall too far. Okay. Now we just grab this, throw it in here. Bada bing, bada boom. Worlds of Power. Alright, uh... 83 read, pages. <laughs> read the first chapter? A as I play this. By, th by the way, now that my gun's this power up, uh, look at what it does. Whoa! Going all over the place. Yeah, these curve shots are supposed to make it easier to hit enemies. Supposed to! <laughs> First page. Why is this on the first page? Uh. Is this like the back of the book? Oh, I think this is the back of the book. Maybe. Ah. Anyway. Follow Jason into a mysterious underground cavern full of strange alien beings. Soon he's locked in battle with the giant. A gang of radioactive mutants fighting to save Earth from destruction. The complete story of the Nintendo Nintendo action adventure game with loads of game solving hints throughout. Yeah, they even adapt the book even adapts the freaking like power ups <laughs> that you collect. <laughs> Chapter and get to reading. Chapter one. Ribbeek! Oh, that's the bog, I guess? Yeah, that's Fred. Ribbeek. Ribbeek. Uh, Jason Frudnick stood outside the black door. Gray, steamy clouds swir whirled around his feet. He felt as if he was floating. Ribbeek. There it was again. That sound was driving him crazy. Something was behind that door. All he had to do was reach out and turn the knob. But a voice inside him said, no. <laughs> run away, run away, or you'll be sorry! Instead, he took a step forward. He couldn't stop himself. His fingertips stretched towards the knob, but he yanked, but he yanked them away. It oh, was... Mark, my, my gun is powered up now, so I can't hit this thing. <laughs> oh gosh, no! Oh no! <laughs> and yet... None of the other games in this series have this problem, but they're all worse than this one for some reason. Wow. Sorry. He said he took a step forward. He couldn't stop himself. He turned it. Stretched towards. Nah, buddy. Anyway, there we go. Turn back now. Ribbeek. That did it. He couldn't stand it any longer. He had to find out what was making that noise. Lunging forward, he gripped the knob. It stuck to his hand, and a frozen slime oozed between his That's fingers. He, it, he turned it in the night stillness. The click of the latch sounded like a gunshot. With a deafening creak, the door opened. Inside the room, it was black, inky black, the black of the deepest spot in the universe. Be beyond stars, beyond light, could fear shot... Cold fear, <laughs> good fear, cold fear shot through Jason. His blood damn it. Damn it. turned to ice. He peeled his hand off the knob. He wanted to turn and run, but his legs moved him into the room. The darkness swallowed him. Gulp. He looked around. By Nothing. the way, my gun's now fully powered up. Yay! And it can shoot through walls. Yay! Awesome! So like in, in, by the way, in, in... Blaster Master Zero, your fully powered up shot is still this wavy thing, but now, but in that one, it's two waves that come out, and there's a center shot that just shoots straight. Huh. So it's this, but improved in every way. Turn it into the night stillness, the click of the latch sounded like a gunshot. With a deafening creak, the door opened. 
Inside of the room, it was black. Inky black. The black of the deepest spot in the universe! By the way, to catch the ladder, you press A instead of up. Huh. That's weird. This game makes a lot it of weird... It made some weird decisions here. <laughs> Select right. gets you in and out of the tank. So the room was black, inky black, black, blah, 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 blah. Cold fear shot through him with blood turned ice. He peeled his hand off the knob. He wanted to turn and run, but his legs moved him into the room. The darkness swallowed him. Gulp. He, he looked around. Nothing there. The noise must have been his imagination. Okay, time to go. Rebeek. Before he could move again, he saw it. It appeared in a blinding flash of light. Solar flare! <laughs> Jason shielded his eyes. Oh, good. The correct move against Solar Flare. Uh, he couldn't see its shape, but he could tell one thing. It was huge. The size of a house. The size of a Tyran... <laughs> a Tyrannosaur. Back... <laughs> I'm so glad you're reading this. A Tyrannosaur back from extinction. <laughs> Jason felt like an ant. A crumb. He, he knew he had to look at it. He had to see the the thing that was about to destroy him. The light was forcing its way into his tightly shut eyes, and he opened them slowly into tiny slits, like a stereotypical Asian character. And what he saw made his jaw drop open in shock. He choked back a scream. Couldn't be. It was. No, he couldn't even think it. It was! Chapter 2. <laughs> okay, keep reading. <laughs> Thud. Jason fell to the floor. His bed wasn't that high, so it didn't hurt too much. Still, it was, it was enough to wake him. He pulled himself out of the tangle of sheets. It was a dream, he said to himself. Only a dream. He felt his heart beating a mile a minute and couldn't help but smile with relief. Thank goodness, things so are... help but smile with relief. <laughs> <laughs> but smile with relief. I picked up some homing missiles there. Now you're swimming. Yes. Keep reading. Uh, <laughs> Don't mind me killing these giant Metroids. smile with relief. <laughs> Thank goodness things like that never happened in real life. Ripping! Jason's breath caught in his throat. The sound is real. It was coming from the box where Fred lived. He lives in a box? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Freddy the Frogger. <laughs> Fred was Jason's pet. But this didn't sound like Fred. Fred's voice sounded more like Ribbit most of the time. Sometimes, if he got excited, it was Ribeek, but never Ribeek! Ribeeko! Yeah. Ribeeko! Fred, Jason asked. Out. Jason called out, Fred! Fred? Jason called out timidly. <laughs> Had to make himself as he was calling. The morning, hey, Fred. the morning sun was filtering through his blinds, casting stripes of light on the floor. It shone through the huge glass box on the table across the room. Ah, dang it. When you get hit, your gun level goes down. Ugh. That's a staple of the series, by the way. Hmm. Well, uh, at least you don't die. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, a little light coming through the room, whatever. Uh, the home he had made for Fred. In the angle of the sun rays, Red Shadow was a dark mutant giant. Was that you, Fred? Jason asked before he could finish the question. Fred began jumping. Rippy! 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 Yeah, three of those things. He was frantic. He, he was, was frantic. <laughs> frantic Fred. <laughs> trying to leap out. Jason couldn't believe his eyes. Fred, what's the matter? Is something wrong? Fred began flinging himself against the glass away from Jason and towards the window. You, you want to go outside? J Jason asked. Don't go away for eight months. <laughs> like, my cat, dude. Uh, yes, you. 
You want to go outside? Uh, you want to go outside just now. Fred jumped up and down, continuing his strange shriek. It was if he understood Jason. Jason was flabbergasted. He knew Fred was smart for a frog, but he had never shown signs of understanding English. By the way, because this weapon shoots three missiles, one ammo counts as three shots. <laughs> Feed him, for goodness sake, Jason, came a groggy voice from down the hall. It was Mr. Frudnick. Uh, Jason's father tried to get his Saturday morning sleep. Oh, I feel you, Mr. Frudnick. <laughs> Okay, Dad, Jason shouted, <coughs> but he knew Fred didn't want to be fed. Fred fed. <laughs> this was a stronger need. A need that would destroy Fred if it wasn't fulfilled. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> does he try, does he need a lady frog? <laughs> uh, let's, uh, Fred didn't want to be fed. Oh. The beak! Hello? I, I don't... I think it's just... Something... Hitting against the door. Things weren't going to be too terrific for Jason either. If he didn't stop Fred from making that noise... Rebeak. Rebeak! And, <laughs> and there was only one way to do that. Shoot him in the face! <laughs> I was thinking the same thing! Only one way to stop. To make that frog croak for the last time. Ooh. Blowing things give you like five ticks from the yeah, meter. Fred, making that noise. There's only one way to do that. <laughs> Easy, pal, Jason said. I'll take care of you. <laughs> he reached down into the high glass walls and pulled out a shotgun <laughs> from the bottom of this rich smell of the soil. The mossy he didn't pull out a shotgun. Well, the... Yeah, I made that up. <laughs> Jason had always been proud of the home he built, and Fred had seemed to love it until now. Jason kept his hands around the frog and strangled him <laughs> and lifted him out. As soon as he sat him down on the table, Fred squirmed away from him and jumped across the room. He landed on Jason's blue carpet and hopped out the half-open window. Oh, there was a window. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are you going? Jason called out, but Fred was already down the hallway. Jason followed him downstairs. Fred hopped through the living room right up to the front door. Rebeek! <laughs> Jason shivered. What was making Fred act like this? He felt as if he were in his dream again. As if something terrible would happen if he opened the door. What is out there, pal? He said in a soft voice. What is out there, pal? He said in a soft voice. Fred began jumping again, hurling himself. I'm just imagining him like... <laughs> Rubik! <laughs> Rubik! Uh, hurling himself. Rubik! <laughs> hurling himself in the front door. His little body made sharp thuds as it bounced back. Okay, okay, I'll let you out. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Jason opened the door. In one bound, Fred leapt over the entire porch. He landed on the front lawn, and in seconds, he was in the street. No! Jumping in the street. Uh, Jason had to run at top speed to catch up, which wasn't easy in his <laughs> slippers. <laughs> Any second now, a truck's gonna come and kill Jason, and he's gonna end up in a weird fantasy world. <laughs> That's what happens when Jason is a chase and his frog. <laughs> it's a tough speed to catch up with the slippers. All around, around them small town of Batrach, Batrachia, 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 whatever. New York lay asleep. This lawn looked a little shaggy. Zoing Scoob! <laughs> I can shoot you through the wall. Ha 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 ha. And Jason knew that the meat mowers said me hours. What am I, a damn palico? <laughs> mowers would be roaring in a few hours. 
it was a quiet, small town by the ocean, and Jason liked it best on the days... Um, I, I don't think you meant to make that a new paragraph there, because <laughs> you just interrupted your own sentence. By the way, some game developer is laughing their ass off at putting a health power-up that you can only get by taking damage. Why, that's the most, that's the biggest troll I've seen in an NES game since that one pizza in the crutch room. <laughs> Actually, that was the second health power-up that forces you to take damage to get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Why? What are you people thinking? <laughs> why would I go for that? <laughs> Even as a kid, like, why would I go for that? Here's the first boss. Master Brain, or Mother Brain. Mother Brain! New York, talking about New York and Shaggy. It's another famous version like the best one. Yeah, that's right. I was talking about this. Days when the wind blew from the south. Then you could... I don't think we're going into an Aladdin song. With the winds from the south! <laughs> Arabian night! Then you could smell gentle, salty breezes. Mmm, that's salty. But, <laughs> but when it blew from the east, the air had a stale, glassy smell from the nearby swamp. Jason. I got a hyper. You. Jason always kept his distance from the swamp. Everyone did. It always seemed creepy and slimy. And some people claim the parts that parts of it glowed at night. Oh yeah, definitely stay away from that radioactive shit. It wasn't the kind of place you ever really thought of visiting. But it was exactly where Fred was headed. Not there, Jason called out. Come back! Well, at least the radioactive material isn't in his front yard in this version. <laughs> Fred was way ahead at the very end of Archer Street. <laughs> Phrasing! <laughs> there was no ho no houses there, just a cyclone fence. Beyond it was far, as far as the eye could see, was the swamp. By now, Fred was uh, uh, a hopping silhouette in in the orange glow of the rising sun. <laughs> Land of the rising sun. Those squinted eyes. <laughs> That was a bad time to read that! <laughs> Jason looked on in horror as Fred wriggled his way under the fence. Uh, he disappeared into the tall swamp grass, appearing again only at the top of each hop. Behold! The closest thing we get to a boss that I fight with the tank. Oh, look at him go! He's dead. <laughs> I need the hyper to hurt him. Yikes. There's an object so wet, an orange glow. I never ran each other with that part anyway. Uh, yeah. Look, Horace, Red Wiggles way on the fence. He disappeared into the tall swamp grass. Uh, oh, watch out for the tall grass, Jason. <laughs> Appearing again only at the top of each hop. Top hop. Leaping over the fence, Jason landed in the swamp and started running. Actually, slogging was more like it, slog slog. Before long, his slippers were soaked into... Capitalize the eye there. Into the muck. <laughs> Noticing a few errors here. <laughs> wait, wait, who published this? Scholastic. I thought you went to the Scholastic. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, um, area two. Er... And, um, how far are you away from finishing this chapter? Uh, that? Like, one more page? Okay, uh, just finish reading. Okay. <sighs> Before long, his slippers were sucked into the... Wait, really? Capital... Uh, no, the, the, the mud. The, the, the muck. But barefooted... He followed Fred into an area of bushes and scrawny trees. He pushed aside the spindly branches that whipped against his face. <laughs> ow! Ow! Stop that! <laughs> it was no use. Fred had vanished into the bushes. There was no way to find him now. Fred! Jason was screaming now. He could be... He c This couldn't be happening! Not to Fred, his best... 
<laughs> oh, you poor sad child. <laughs> Not to the pet that Jason had raised from a tadpole. <laughs> Fred couldn't possibly survive in a swamp. Don't, 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 don't frogs live in a swamp? <laughs> well, yeah, but this was raised in captivity. Not it's to a... mention, this is a radioactive swamp. <laughs> Fred, where are you? <laughs> Jason's answer came, but it wasn't a frog sound. It was a low, sinister hum to his left. Um, Jason pushed aside some thick, overgrown vines and followed the voice. He came to another field. The grass was uh, here was pale, almost brown. It looked as if it had been scorched in the sun. There was a dull, sickly green glow in the middle of it. Jason cautiously uh, approached. Soon he could see where the glow came from. A strange metallic box that jutted out of the ground. On top, shut up. On top of it was a small shadow and seemed to be glowing. It was in the shape of a frog. The there oh. you are! <laughs> Jason <laughs> shouted. I thought I'd lost. <laughs> it sounds like such a dork. <laughs> Jason cut himself off. He was sure he could recognize his his pet anywhere, and this had to be Fred. But the size was wrong. Fred wasn't nearly that big. Maybe it was a trick of the rising sun. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> a reaction to the swamp gas. Jason rubbed his eyes. When he opened them, Fred was the size of a Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> a Cocker Spaniel's fun to say. <laughs> His little chest was puffing in and out furiously as he breathed, and with each breath he grew bigger to the size of a wolf, a panther. Uh. Can I just... No, um, no, that freaking... No, okay, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Jason backed away. He opened his mouth to scream, but no sound came out. Slowly, the box on which Fred was sitting began to shrink and uh, sink, not shrink. And as the top of his swollen frog, sw yes, yeah, swollen, <laughs> swollen frog, had disappeared beneath the ground, Jason could swear he saw a look of fear and panic in his poor pet's eyes. Game hints! Turn it upside down to read! <laughs> Can I actually do that? No. Well, I mean, I can kind of read upside down. Uh, <laughs> level 2 earns the crusher. Level 3 earns the hover. Level 4 earns the key for level 5. Level 5 earns the diving bell. Level 6 lets you walk on the wall. Level 7 lets you dive on the ceiling. Upside down reading, the, everyone! Drive on the ceiling. Drive now. on the ceiling, not dive on the ceiling. <laughs> Anyways, that, that's the first episode. Um, join us next time for Area 2. Where we'll read Chapter 3. Yes. Bye.